Hello students, welcome to Kenny's EduCare, a group of Kenny Solutions. This is part 8 of lesson number 12, Sound. Now this is going to be the last part for the lesson where we are going to discuss on the summary and the 22 questions that we have uh, to discuss. Right now I have shown you all the questions in all the parts. So you are aware of that what kind of questions you need to answer and what kind of question you had to be prepared for. Right. The reason I was showing you the exercise question in every part was the same. So that when we are starting with the like actual discussion on the exercise, every one of you are aware of that. Okay. So now, for now, like as this is the last part, we have discussed so many parts in the lesson like what are mechanical wave, what is wave, what is wavelength, what is the SI unit of wavelength. Then mechanical waves are of two type, what is transverse wave, what is longitudinal wave. What is the difference between transverse and longitudinal wave? You even came to know that, right? Then we discussed on what is frequency, what is amplitude, what is echo, what is reverberation, what are the uses of multiple reflection of sound. We discussed on sonar, then ultrasonic sound, uses of ultrasonic sound. So many concepts in the lesson, right? So now before i proceed with this part that is part eight of this lesson sound i want each one of you to revise whatever notes you have taken in your notebook now i'm not going to show you the slides one by one for revision because we have the summary discussion right so we will do the summary and after doing the summary i'll show you the slides and then we'll do the exercise question okay so that that will be the flow that i'm going to go with but before that, before we start with that, I want each one of you to please revise each and every concept that we have, like, that you have taken note of. Okay? I hope every one of you are revising it.
you have to revise each and everything properly because you need to answer for the exercise questions right so make sure you are revising it properly So this is the, I'm showing you all so that you are just having a look on the subtopic and understanding it.
I hope you all are going through the slide as well. These are all important parts, okay, on sonar and ultrasonic sound. So make sure you know them as well. And then lastly, we discussed on the uh, structure of the human ear, right? So you need to know the diagram as well. Make sure that you all revise the diagram, okay? I am going to focus you all, uh, like, I'm going to force you all to do the diagram because uh, whenever it comes to structure of human ear it somehow becomes the topic of biology right so in that case you should be knowing uh, how to draw the diagram for that okay So now I want you all to please go through, go through this summary. Every point that has been mentioned has already been discussed, right? 
so i want you all to please go through the slide everyone I hope every one of you are reading the summary because I'm going to make you all like give the answer for for the questions, right? So make sure you are you all know the summary. I hope every one of you are going through the summary.
now we have some of the exercise questions like 22 exercise questions that we are going to discuss so everyone please be ready so we have like more summary part that has been given please go through it and then we'll start with the discussion on the exercise okay i hope you all are done going through it now we can start with the exercise so the first question that they have given or asked you over here is what is sound and how is it produced so tell me what is sound like how will you explain sound and according to you how uh, sound has been produced yes everyone i hope you all are trying to answer the question that has been asked so i'll tell you what exactly you can write over here is sound is produced due to vibration right if there will be no vibration sound won't be produced so sound is produced because of vibrations so when a body vibrate it forces the adjacent particle of the medium to vibrate as well okay so if one body is vibrating whatever adjacent particles are present around that uh, body will even start vibrating right so because of this there will be a disturbance in the medium which travel as waves and reaches the ear and that is how the sound is produced okay so i hope you all have understood at least 
capital year what exactly you need to write over here now we have the second question that is describe with the help of a diagram how compression and rarefaction are produced in air near a source of sound okay so i want you all to try the answer for this question okay now the second question is like i hope you are trying to uh, write about compression and rarefaction how exactly they have been produced in air so what you can uh, give an example over here that when the school bell is hit with a hammer now i don't know like now the schools have changed they have that uh, bell kind of thing not that actual bell they have just they like they just have to press a button and it's done right but like in many of the schools still we have the uh, school bell where it has been hit with an hammer right so when it has been hit by an hammer the bell is going to move forward and backward because of which compression and rarefactions are produced due to vibration okay what will happen compression and rarefactions are produced due to vibrations and whenever it moves forward it creates high pressure in its surrounding area so let's say if the bell is moving forward there will be high pressure in the surrounding area and this high pressure region we know that as compression what do we know that as compression and when it moves backward it is going to create low pressure area in its surrounding and this region is called as rarefaction so high pressure region is called as compression low pressure region is known as rarefaction and always high pressure will be in forward direction low pressure will be in the backward direction so you know how you can draw compression and rarefaction right so i want you all to draw that diagram as well and explain this with an example that i gave you all okay then we have the third question as cite an experiment to show that the sound needs a material medium for its propagation it means now you have to come up with an experiment where you can actually uh, conclude that sound needs a medium material medium for its propagation okay so what we need to do is we need to take an electric bell okay take an electric bell hang it inside an empty bell jar and you have to fit that empty bell jar with a vacuum pump okay so just imagine that you have an empty bell jar inside which you have an electric bell which has been hanged and from below you have to uh, put on a vacuum pump from down okay and initially like when you start the experiment you will only be able to listen to the sound of the ringing bell okay now after listening to the sound of ringing bell pump out some air from the bell jar using the vacuum pump now you have attached a vacuum pump to the um, uh, to the bell jar right so what we need to do is we need to pump out some air from the bell jar using the vacuum pump and you will release that sound of the like you will realize that the sound of the ringing bell decreases like earlier you have heard the sound of the ringing bell right but as soon as when you add the vacuum pump when you release the air of the vacuum pump the sound of the ringing bell will decrease and if you keep on pumping the air out of the bell jar the glass jar will be devoid of any air after some time so now try to ring the bell and you will see that you won't be able to listen to sound because sound doesn't travel to a vacuum right so it means 
when there is no air present in the bell jar a vacuum is produced so using a vacuum pump what are we doing we are releasing out all the air because of which like there will be no air in the bell jar and a vacuum has been produced so we already know that sound cannot travel through a vacuum and therefore this experiment shows that sound needs a material medium for its propagation if the material is not available the sound won't propagate okay so i want each one of you to please write this uh, answer in short so that you know about this I hope every one of you are writing it. Now we have the fourth question, which is like, why is sound wave called a longitudinal wave? now you have already dis like you already know this answer right because the vibration of the of the medium that travel parallel to the direction of the wave or along the direction of the wave we call that wave as longitudinal wave so first of all you have to give the definition for longitudinal wave then you will write that the direction of particle in the medium vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation of disturbance what will you write that the direction of particle of medium vibrates parallel to the direction of the propagation of disturbance and therefore a sound wave is called longitudinal wave getting it why a sound wave is called as longitudinal wave so please take a short note on it so that you remember it
okay now we have the fifth question as which characteristics of the sound help you to identify your friend by his voice while sitting with others in a dark room so if you are sitting with others in a dark room what will be the characteristic of sound that is going to help you or like that is going to help you to identify the voice of your friend it's quality of sound is the characteristics that help us to identify the voice of a particular person right if i am speaking to you and if i meet you some day somewhere okay you will come to know that he is the only one who was teaching us right why because of the quality of voice that we have everyone has a different quality of voice right so two people may have the same pitch and loudness but the qualities will be different okay then after this we have the sixth question as flash and thunder are produced simultaneously but thunder is heard a few seconds after the flash is seen why so we have already discussed this question that the speed of the sound is 344 meter per second whereas the speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second right so because the speed of light is less when compared to speed of speed of light is less than that compared to the speed of sound right so due to this reason thunder takes more time to reach the earth as compared to light speed which is faster so because the speed of light is faster you are able to see the flash first and thunder later okay so i hope you all know this reason already okay now we have the seventh question where it's a kind of numerical for you so a person has a hearing range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz what are the typical wavelengths of sound waves in air corresponding to the two frequencies and take the speed of sound in air as 344 meter per second 
So what do you think for this? How are you going to calculate the sound wave over here? So you, you have to use the formula for speed that you have discussed first. That speed is equal to wavelength into frequency, right? That is V is equal to lambda into V, right? So we know that V is 20 hertz and frequency is V by V1. That is 344 divided by 20. So you'll get the answer as 17.2 meters. And for V2, V2 is 20,000 hertz, right? So again, for finding the lambda 2, what you will do? 344 divided by 20,000 and you'll get the answer as 0 0.0172 meter. So the hearing wavelength in humans is in range of 0 0.0172 meter to 17.2 meters. I hope you all understood how I going to calculate it. You just have to divide 344 by 20 first. That will, that, that will be your lambda 1. And then you will be dividing 344 by 20,000 hertz. That will be your lambda 2. And you, you will get the answer. So you can even try it if you all want. After the seventh question, the next question is that two children are at opposite ends of an aluminium rod. Where one strikes the end of the rod with a stone, find the ratio of time taken by the sound wave in air and in aluminium to reach the second side. So over here the length of the aluminium rod will be the distance. That will be D. And Speed of sound wave at 25 degrees Celsius will be 6420 meter per second. Volume of aluminium. Okay. Then time taken to reach the other end is distance divided by 6420 meter per second. Okay. So over here what you will do to calculate the time taken by the sound. You will be doing it as D upon d is the distance upon volume of uh, like speed of sound in air so we know that the distance is unknown right so it will become d divided by 346 346 is the speed of sound in air okay so therefore the ratio of the time taken by sound in aluminium and air will become 6420 divided by 346. Now 6430 you should be knowing this that it is the speed of aluminium in short. Okay. And for speed of sound in air you should be knowing that as well that is 346. I will show you the table where we have discussed this. So everything is for a reason right. So you need to know the speed. Can you see aluminium 6420. Speed in meter per second 6420. Yeah. And of sound it is 346. So you should be knowing this both the part. And then only you will be able to do this question. Okay. Now we have the next question as. The frequency of source of sound is 100 hertz. 
How many times does it vibrate in a minute? So frequency is equal to number of oscillation divided by total time and we know number of oscillation is frequency multiplied by time right and frequency given is 100 hertz so total time is equal to 1 minute which is equal to 60 seconds. So number of oscillations will be 100 multiplied by 60 which will be equal to 6000 right and the source the sound vibrates 6000 times in a minute and produces a frequency of 100 hertz got it you just have to convert minute into seconds and you have to multiply it After this, we have the 10th question as, does sound follow the same law of reflection as light does? Yes, sound follows the same law of reflection as light, right? So we have discussed that the reflected ray, the normal and the incident ray, they all lie in the same plane, right? And angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So yes, they follow the same law of reflection, okay? Then we have 11th question. When a sound is reflected from a distant object, an echo is produced. Okay? You know this. So, let the distance between the reflecting surface and the source of sound production remains the same. Do you, you, do you hear an echo sound on a hotter day? So, first of all, you should be knowing when exactly an echo has been produced, right? So, echo is heard. When the time interval between the reflected sound and the original sound is at least 0 0.1 second. The time interval between reflected sound and the original sound should be at least 0 0.1 second. So as the temperature will increase, the speed of the sound will also increase. And on hotter days, the time interval decreases so an echo is audible only if the time interval is between or greater than 0 0.1 second right so it will become difficult to hear an echo on hotter days okay do write this in your own words everyone Okay, now give two practical applications of reflection of sound wave. So, for this reflection of the sound wave, we use it to measure speed and distance of the underwater object, right? And we call this method as sonar, right? And the second application that you can write is a working of the stethoscope. So, sound of patient's heartbeat 
reaches the doctor's ear through multiple reflection of sound so that is also an application of the reflection of sound wave right so you can write this to example application and if you have other you can even write that Now the next question that we have is numerical again. So a stone is dropped from the top of a tower 500 meter high into the pond of water at the base of the tower. When is this splash heard at the top and given is uh, g is equal to 10 meter per second and speed of sound is 340 meter per second. So height given is 500 meter, velocity given is 340 meter per second. Acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second and initial velocity of the stone is 0, right? So, as per the second equation of motion, we know S is equal to ut plus half gt square because at square can be written as dt as well, right? Acceleration due to gravity. So, you will put the values and you will get the time t1, okay? Then, what you will do you are going to add on the time okay it's very easy you have to use the formula s is equal to ut plus g half gt square okay and you will get the answer as 11.47 seconds okay then we have 14th question a sound wave travels at a speed of 339 meter per second if its wavelength is 1.5 centimeter what is the frequency of the wave? Will it be audible? So you have to calculate it using the speed of sound which is equal to wavelength into frequency. Now wavelength is given frequency you need to calculate, right? So V will become equal to mu divided by lambda that is 339 divided by 0 0.015 and that will be equal to 22,600 hertz. Okay? So, because it is 22,600 hertz, it won't be audible, right? Because we know the audible range is between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, right? Now, this is very easy. You have studied this. What is reverberation and how it can be reduced? So, we know that multiple reflection of sound in closed big space. That is called as reverberation. And you can reduce that by covering the walls and ceilings of enclosed spaces with some sound absorbing material like loose woolens and fiber bones. If you remember we have discussed that same thing has been used in theatres as well, right? Now all the questions that we have ahead is theoretical questions so you might be knowing the answers for them. Now what is the loudness of sound and what factor does it depend on? So we know loud sounds they are going to have high energy, right? And loudness is directly like loudness directly depends upon the amplitude of vibration and it's like proportional to the square of the amplitude of vibration of sound, right? So you know about loudness, you can write that. Explain how bats use ultrasound to catch prey. You know that bats have uh, ability to produce high pitched ultrasonic squeeze. So this squeaks get reflected by objects like prey and return to their ears because of which the bat come to know where exactly their prey is so it's easier for them okay then how is ultrasound used for cleaning we know that we can clean them by like object will be put in a cleaning solution and then we are going to like allow ultrasonic sound to pass through that and because this ultrasonic waves they have high frequency 
they are going to help in detaching the dirt from the object so this is how we can use an ultrasound for cleaning purpose as well now we have already discussed this so you might be finding this all easy right now after this we have the next question as explain the working and application of sonar so you know this as well that sonar stands for so sound navigation and ranging and it is an acoustic device which measures distance speed depth of underwater object like submarines using ultrasound even we can come to know the depth of the ocean and the seas using this sonar right so you have to write about the application and working of sonar so we make sure you are writing them in brief and there was one diagram i'll show you which you need to draw over here of the boat this diagram okay do draw this as well now the last uh, 20th question that we have is a sonar device on submarine sends out a signal and receives an echo 5 second later calculate the speed of sound in water if the distance of the object from the submarine is 3625 meter so time taken to hear the echo is 5 second distance of object from submarine is 3625 meters so total distance traveled by sonar will be equal to 2d right so you you will be doing it velo calculating the velocity as 2d divided by t so it means 2 into 3625 divided by time taken as 5 second right so you will get the answer as 1450 meter per second okay then explain how defects in metal block can be detected using ultrasound so defective metal blocks are not going to allow the ultrasound to pass through them and they are going to reflect it back so this technique can be used for finding out uh, like defects in the metal block and you can make a setup where you are going to allow the ultrasound to pass through one end and detect the detect the disturbance at the other end the reflected uh, you can say sound at the other end okay so this is how we can find out the defects in the metal block quickly with the help of ultrasound okay now the last question that we have is explain how the human ear works so you know that you need to write about vibrations over your about the ear drum you know what happens your pinna which is your external ear is going to collect the sound right sound waves and then it will be like pass through the ear canal from ear canal it passes through the middle ear middle ear is going to send it to the inner ear and then the message has been passed to your brain okay whatever like sound is there you will get that okay so according to me you all will be able to write this and we are done with this lesson sound over here and i hope that every one of you are clear with this lesson now this lesson was not that lengthy not that hard okay this is the easiest lesson according to me so i want each one of you to make sure that you are knowing the concepts and you are able to explain the answers in your own word in brief okay you should not uh, like you should not get stuck over here because these are all important part that we had discussed there are not much concepts so according to me this is the easiest lesson please make sure that you are preparing for this lesson very well so that you are able to write the answers well okay so i'll end this lesson over here and i hope every one of you are going to continue writing the exercise answers because that is also equally very important right so i want you all to write the exercise answers that i explained you right now i was not able to like assign you with certain time to write it because we cannot have that much time right otherwise the video will be too long so if you get any doubt in any of the answer please reach out to us okay so i'll end up with this lesson over here 
and i'll be continuing with the next lesson in the next part thank you everyone